Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you've been keeping up with my videos, you'll know that I've done quite a few on Hall Effect boards at this point. Hall Effect technology has quickly become a popular option for gamers because of the unique benefits over traditional mechanical switches. And with that popularity, we've now entered an era where established custom keyboard brands have decided to enter the market. If you recall, QWERTY keys reached out to me to review their TKL Hex 80 HE. It was my first time seeing a Hall Effect board with a truly premium design, and I had a lot of fun with it. Fast forward to today, and they asked if I also wanted to look at another upcoming board that they were working on. This is the Neosonic HE Plus, their take on the 65% layout, and it's planned to go on sale next week on Friday, September 5th. Full disclosure, this keyboard was sent to me for free for this review, but as always, all opinions will be my own. Remember to subscribe to help support the channel, and all relevant links are in the description. Gaming with the Neosonic HE Plus is about as good of an experience as you could ask for. The board features its own proprietary web configurator, which I'll take a closer look at later on. As for its performance metrics, it has an 8kHz pulling rate, 0.125 millisecond latency, and 0.01mm switch sensitivity. And all that basically means it is both fast and accurate, exactly what you need for gaming. Also, on their store page, they directly advertise some of the unique software features only possible with Hall Effect keyboards. Adjustable actuation point, rapid trigger, rappy snappy, and dynamic keystrokes. These animations do a good job of demonstrating each one, showing you how your board reacts differently to your key presses. By default, these will all be disabled, and you'll use their configuration tool to enable the ones you want. As my recommendation, if you get this, or any Hall Effect board for that matter, Rapid Trigger is always worth enabling. It gives you the feeling of additional responsiveness that is impossible on a mechanical keyboard. For my testing, I played a variety of different games that I'm familiar with to see how the board affects my experience. I had a great time trying things out, and I think it certainly holds up to its competitors. The performance was as expected and remained dependable no matter what game I was playing. The board will come in 6 different colors. Grey, green, black, sand gold, and this one which is purple. I decided on this because I do want to show off a little more variety on my channel so I'm going to try to always ask for unique colorways. This case design isn't new, it's nearly identical to the original Neo 65 which is a classic mechanical keyboard. That board was already well loved by the greater keyboard community for being both an affordable and premium option. Side note, I was informed that they will be selling a Hall Effect module later on, allowing you to upgrade existing Neo 65s. All around the outside is pretty much the same. The case is milled from CNC aluminum and has nice angles and edges. The main difference is on the bottom weight. The Neo logo is redesigned with the same font that's on the keycaps, on the other side it says Sonic because that's the new name for this board, and there's a new Polaris logo. The keycaps look to be the same ones from the Hex 80 with different legends. The dark translucent plastic nicely diffuses the RGB lighting which I set to a static purple to match the theme of the board. If you were wondering, the green keycaps come with the green and purple cases, and all other cases come with white ones with the same design. This font choice is stylized so it's going to be hit or miss, but I actually think it looks nice. I do have one complaint that might be small or big depending on who you ask. They misspelled ALT. This says IT. A-I-T. And I know this is an error because the CTRL, DELETE, and L keys all use the same font capital L. Only the ALT key is different and uses what might be a lowercase l but is probably a capital I. I don't know if they have the ability to correct this error for the public release, but for now you get an IT key and seven ALT key. The switches included are Outlabs Novas. Feel free to pause and take a look at the stat sheet. They're pre-lubricated and have excellent smoothness. And these switches feel light with a noticeably short travel distance. The buzzword of THOCK wasn't really resonating with me. I think the overall sound is clacky with a thin body. I decided to open it up because there was something I wanted to show you guys. The disassembly process was kind of funny to learn. 
First, remove the only two visible screws on the bottom weight. To remove the plate, you literally just rip the whole thing out of the case. I mean, obviously do this carefully and try not to lose your keycaps like I did. The plate stays attached to the case entirely from the silicone gasket design and zero screws whatsoever. Be aware that there is a ribbon cable that you definitely do not want to damage. Take out the included foams and undo all the screws that were revealed to detach the bottom weight. Here's where the daughter board is and the thing that I wanted to show you. There are two stainless steel weights integrated into the board. These weights are actually marketed as a selling point, claiming to resist shaking, shifting, and deformation. For example, if you accidentally bump it on your desk or are aggressively mashing the keys, it's not going to be moving around and should remain solidly in place. The configuration software can be found at this link here. It's a completely web-based driver, meaning that it works entirely in your browser. I've used a lot of keyboard configuration software, and this one stands out to me as being one of the best. The UI is clean and intuitive, everything is labeled accurately, and I just found it really easy to use. In the Performance tab, you can adjust your actuation point, enable rapid trigger, and recalibrate your switches. There's even a list of presets for popular Hall Effect switches to choose from if you ever hot swap them out. The RGB effects, remap, and settings tabs are all self-explanatory, so I'll skip to the advanced keys. This is where you'll find all the special settings exclusive to Hall Effect keyboards. Quickly going through them all, it has RS, aka Rappy Snappy, SOCD, Dual Key Trigger, Dynamic Keystroke, MT, Tap Hold, Dual Action, Toggle, Release Trigger, Alternating Trigger, and Multipoint Trigger. I do want to remind everyone that depending on the game you're playing, some of these features are considered cheating. So do your own research to find out if you're allowed to use the feature you want in the games that you play. Compared to other Hall Effect boards that I've tried, the Neosonic HE Plus fits right in. Actually playing with this board felt really good to me. I didn't have enough time to test all these special features, but I had Rapid Trigger on constantly throughout. No matter the game I played, my inputs were snappy, accurate, and precise. Movement in games had that extra fidelity that I've come to expect with Hall Effect boards. And being able to match inputs quickly in a game like Tetris becomes a breeze. Rest assured, the gaming experience with this board does give you that elevated feeling over a traditional mechanical one. Honestly, I would recommend this board to a lot of different types of people. If you're in the mechanical keyboard hobby and want a 65% Hall Effect board from an established brand in the community, then look no further. Or if you're just a gamer and are looking for a Hall Effect board with a premium case, I would also recommend this to you. It's listed at $125, which is not only a fair and competitive price, but also just a flat out good value for what you get. And honestly, a big selling point for me is the design. Everything from the shape of the case, to how the keycaps interact with the lighting, to the unique gasket mount solidifies this board as one of the best you can buy. Before we listen to the sound test, remember to subscribe to support the channel. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.